the um, it wasn't the Pinay Bracca back of today. It's the Pinay Bracca of, of, of back then. I'm not even sure if we know where it was geographically. We may not even be in the same place. Um, but they're together. Now, what's unique about Rabbi Akiva? Rabbi Akiva is alive during the time of the Roman Revolt. He even is part of the Roman Revolt and according to tradition, was part of the Bar Kokhba army and was his shield, uh, shield holder. Anyway, so they're sitting together and the Talmudim of these five rabbis come together and say, they say like this, Rabbis, the time of Kriya Shema have come, has come, and why didn't they know? Because they were reading, they were saying Yisim Yisraim all through the night. And it, then morning would come and they were reminded that you need to say Kriya Shema now. Now, a little bit of a halachic concept which bothers us is the fact that what are they doing in Bnei Brak? Meaning, Yes, Chaim raised the uh, jovial comment that it's Haredi, what are they doing there? I mean, he didn't say that, but he, he hinted towards that. Um, there's more a deep question, and if we ask the question, the answer is very, very deep answer, okay? So if we see now on the right, this this answer is written by the Archa um, Shulchan, by Vichel Michael Epstein, who was a rabbi in the generation just before the Mishnah Bura. So we're talking about 100-something years ago. And he um, was quite pro-Israel um, and was very connected also to the Chabad movement, even though he wasn't a Chabad. And he wrote a book called the Aruch HaShulchan, which is a book which everyone used before the Mishnah Bura as a, uh, as a if, if you ask an Ashkenazi, as a book of reference for Halacha. Okay, so he asks like this on the right. Maaseh Rabbi Yaza, Rabbi Rabbi Yoshua. Yeshli Bon Bazer, the Ha Rabbi Leza Haita, Dirato, Balot. Rabbi Leza lived in Lod, which is probably the Lod of today, which is next to the airport. Rabbi Yoshua, Pekin. Rabbi Yoshua lived in Pekin. Pekin is a place in the north of Israel, uh, which is today a Druze and Arab town in the Galil, which has some Jews who've lived there since the time of the Second Temple, um, family, meaning descendants. Rabbi Kiva ben Bnei Brak, Kedita Bezanhedrin. So you have five rabbis. We know two of them lived elsewhere. Two, one of them lived in Lud, and one lived in Pekin. Pekin is very far. I mean, Lod and Pekin aren't close to each other, so we know that people are walking far. Rabbi Leza, Rabbi Yehuda, Hayu Rabotav, Shel Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Eliezer, Eliezer are the rabbis of Rabbi Kiva. Normally, I mean, I don't know what you... Think. Hold on, Rabbi. How can we listen to them, the Haredim, no? Can you ask? It's a good question again. But if, <laughs> they, gay, if, if they are Haredi, if, if the joke's being made that they're Haredi, then only one of them is from Bnei Brak. Only Rabbi Kiva is the Haredi one. The other one's uh, Rabbi. Are... So we like the rest of them. We like the rest of them. Anyway, we they weren't really Haredi, and even if they were Haredi, they were Gedolei Ador. And so let's let's leave the Haredi jokes uh, on the side now. And Rob, uh, how do we know they were in Israel? Because um, if you're saying they're in Pekin, there's um, there's also Pekin in um, England. There was Pekin in in China, you mean? No, there's also one in England. Okay, well, well we know. Okay. It's near Birmingham. Okay. Again, the uh, we know it is in Pekin because Pekin is a place in Israel and they hadn't left Israel yet because this was just after the destruction of the, of the second time. Oh, okay. okay, we know the Chacham hadn't got to England yet. That was until that was a thousand something years later that the well, no, a bit less than a thousand that they got there. So they definitely weren't in China or in England, they're definitely in Israel. Um, but I feel this is like Purim Torah. You guys are challenging me on Purim stuff. But okay, we're going to get back to the actual here. Bim Kane, as if I touch the Shavtu Kulam Bechaga Pesach Hetz of Rabbi Kiva. If Rabbi Yishon Rabbi Lezer, the rabbis of Rabbi Kiva, normally on Chagim, the Talmidim go to the rabbi, not the other way around. Why the rabbi is going to Rabbi Kiva? Okay, Rabbi Lezer, you're telling someone. And Rabbi Lezer also, there's more of a question. The Eu who sviale besuka shasul etzim mebeit oberegel. Rabbi Yezer is of, of the opinion, Rabbi Yezer ben Azariah even, is of the opinion that you don't leave your house on Chag, meaning unless there's a Beit HaMikdash, you stay in your house, you don't go traveling around. So why is Rabbi Yezer ben Azariah leaving his house in 
um, Lud and going or Lod and going to Bnei Brak to his Talmud. Via Shas Parich Sham Arabi Elazar Shabbat Shabbat Be Kesari Hechavit Hachi Metel Shabbat Haita Vlog Ein Sham. The Gemara over there, which challenges Rabbi Elazar Ben Azar about being somewhere else on on Shabbat and going away for Shabbos, answers simply on Shabbat. You're allowed to travel around. Meaning before Shabbat. Bon Chagi can't. Vim can ech Shabbat, Pepesach, Shlobim Komo, etc. Bikiva Tamido. So we need to ask, what is Rebbe Yeza doing walking around the rest of Israel and not staying in the in in his home, which is in Lod? Um I'm gonna skip a bit, because he's challenging the question, and therefore we still need to we're going to just finish off the question. Just down here, I don't know if you can see my mouse, if you can, but it's here. In lots of other places we hear um, that Rebbe Yezer really did hold by that you are you have to be just happy, and you have to make your wife happy, you have to stay around uh, and, and not leave your home. And that's on all the three foot festivals. So what on earth is Rabbi Lezer doing by leaving his house and going to spend Pesach with Rabbi Akiva? And we need to understand it, okay? Because it doesn't make sense because Rabbi Lezer is the one that normally doesn't travel. And so the Aruch HaShulchan says there must have been a real reason for him to leave. And we need to find out what that reason is, okay? There must have been a deeper reason for him to go traveling around and leaving his house, he must have wanted to go to Rabbi Akiva for a certain reason. And we need to understand what's so unique about Rabbi Akiva. Um, that's a hint already. Why would you think that Rabbi, Rabbi, Lezer, uh, Rabbi Lazar, Ben Azar, I'm sorry, and Rabbi Yeshua, who live in different places, why have they traveled all the way? And all the more so, why has Rabbi Lazar Ben Azar, who says you can't move over around on Chag, why has he made an exception for this time? Anyone got any suggestions before we get to an answer? Why do you think that? Why do you think that he th thinks it's uh, important to be with Rabbi Akiva? Anyone got any answers? Wasn't Rabbi Akiva a guy? Maybe he was ancestors oh. Jewish. He was descendants of co converts. You're right, but he himself wasn't a convert. Okay, but what? So, so if he was a descendant of converts, so why is it so important to be with him? Teach him the story. I don't know. Oh, but Rabbi Akiva's already the whole Rabbi point. But Rabbi Kiva is already page that is to teach people the story, isn't it? Right, right. But Rabbi Kiva is already Rabbi Kiva. He's not the kid. He's not the adult who doesn't know how to read. He's the he's Rabbi Kiva. He's, he's already. Yeah, but wouldn't he's already uh, expert wouldn't... in all the Torah? Right, but wouldn't it uh, wouldn't it mean by him going to Rabbi Akiva, it's like him experiencing someone that sort of came out of Egypt, which is like they came out from being converts and like came to uh more like that youth. I understand I understand what you're saying, but it didn't doesn't say that they went every year to B'nai Brak. It sounds like they went this year to B'nai Brak and it's that's why it's so unique. The question is why did they go that one time to B'nai Brak? It wasn't the first Pesach after he converted. So we need to understand what's going on. Because if it was the first Pesach after he converted, he wouldn't be called Rebbe Kiv yet. He'd still be learning his alphabet or learning Mishnah, but he wouldn't be like the Rebbe Kiva we all, you know, he became Rebbe Kiva after years and years of learning. Okay, so we, that being said, um, where are we? Uh, share screen, I've lost where share screen is. One second. Where's share screen? Oh, here. Um, okay, we'll go back to his answer, please, God. Okay. So, and it would seem, oh, if, if anyone writes on the group that we're in the waiting room and I haven't seen it, will you let me know? Just so I, uh, okay. Okay. It once happened. What's the famous story of um, Rabbi Kiva and people crying? You know the story? 
crying over the destruction of the temple. Oh, and then he was laughing. Right. Why? Why? And what was his answer? If, why weren't you uh, crying during when it was still around? No, 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 no. Manson, you remember the answer? Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva's laughing. They say, "Why are you laughing?" He says, "Why are you crying?" Because, it, because, because the um, the I forgot the thing. Nevoa came true because there was a wolf running across the rocks, the fox, and he's like, "If that one can come through, a different one can." Yeah, the, the fox, the fox. So he sees a fox uh, running on the Beit Hamikdash and running on Harabait, and he says, "If that's become true, then I believe that if that prophecy has come true, then so too the prophecy of the different prophet." where everything will be rebuilt is also going to come true. Now, that's a story that most of us know. However, in Makot, there's another story, which is like this. So I don't know who's following along, but the paragraph here on the right. So we are five lines down, four lines down. There are three even. They were going along the way, and they hear the great noise of the legions of the Roman army. They started crying. So this is not like after the destruction. This is when they hear the battle, the roars of battle of the Romans. They start crying. Rabbi Akiva is laughing. And they ask, he asks, sorry, why are you crying? And they say, because they are sitting comfortably with no worries they the romans and we are suffering greatly that's exactly the reason i'm laughing so this is a slightly different answer which is less well known we all know the fox answer i assume after you we jog your memory on the fox answer you remembered it because it's quite a well-known thing but um uh yeah not really Okay, so, so it's quite well known. Sorry, but here, this is a slightly different reading where they, Rebbe Kiva answers like this. That's exactly why I'm laughing, he says. If those who are not doing God's will are suffering, are enjoying life so much, or the more so those, meaning we, who are doing God's will, we will see the reward as well. So it's not like the fox where he's saying the prophecy kept was kept. He's rather looking at the reality of his times and saying, I believe in college democracy. And I don't see the enjoyment of the Romans and the, the shalva and the quiet and the peace and the tranquility that the Romans dwell in as disproof of the Jewish people. I actually find it a proof that if they are enjoying in, in, or, or, or a consolation, if they enjoy their lives so well, or the more so the Jewish people. So that's Rabbi Kiva. Rabbi Kiva is a man of good tidings. He's able to turn bad things into good things. Gamzul Tova. So says the Aruch Hashulchan. How is this a real consolation, Rabbi Kiva? It's a hard answer because at the end of the day, the Romans right now, at the time that they are walking along and hearing the battle, and the, and, and the Roman knowing the Romans are winning and knowing that they are enjoying their lives. Um, at the end of the day, it's not a good answer. Why? Because the Romans are suffering. Sorry, the Romans are enjoying life and the Jews are suffering. So what kind of consolation is that? If Rabbi Kiva was trying to say, Olam Abba will be good for the Jewish people. Uh, what, those Tanaim who were sad didn't know about Olam Abba. Of course they believe in Olam Abba. If they don't believe in Olam Abba, who believes in it? Well, they must have. Um... Rather, for sure, he was trying to comfort them by talking about the world, this world. And even though he's talking about this world, there must be something deeper. And what's the deeper thing he's trying to say? He's trying to say, we'll talk about in a second, that don't worry, this world is bad, but actually this world is good. And he's going to talk about that. And through knowing that Rabbi Kiva has this skill, to, to comfort people, that might be the answer of why these rabbis came to Rabbi Kiva. There are some people that say that they are actually in hiding during this time. It's after the Bar Kokhba revolt, and they're doing Leila Seder secretly in Bnei Brak together. They've come to Rabbi Kiva after the revolt, 
because they know that Rabbi Kiva is one who can, as he result, as he comforted them in the past, either with a fox story or with a story where they are hearing the, the pleasant the pleasantness and the, the, the tranquility of the Romans and they don't get it. He they know, these rabbis know that they need to get recharged, even though these rabbi rabbis, Rabbi Azabara Ben Azaya and Rabbi Yeshua are Rabbi Kiva's rabbis themselves, they know that if they want to recharge their batteries of Emuna, they go to Rabbi Kiva. Okay? So nearly the Bemet Nichman we're in the middle um column now. Nere Leva the Bemet Nichman Al Olamaze Bekdem Divre Hanavi Bahani Agever Bomer Avad Nitri Vitrolati Mashem Zachar Oni Umudi Lana Varosh Zhot is called Tasuach Alai Nafshi Zota Shiv Alibi Al Kenochil Khaste Hashem Kilo Tamnu Kilo Kalur Hamav. So he's quoting Sukim from Echa. Um, now, because it's quite a quick succession of Sukkim, I will read out the translation in Echa. Um, one second. Echa. It's in Echa Gimel Sukkim 18 to 22. So I'll just read out the translation. And I said, Lost is my strength and my expectations from Hashem. Remember my afflictions, my sorrow, the wormwood and bitterness. My soul remembers well and makes me despondent. Yet this I bear in mind, therefore I will hope. Hashem's kindness surely has not ended, nor has his mercies exhausted. Meaning at the beginning, we say there's no expectation from, uh, from Hashem. Lost is my strength and my expectation from Hashem. I have no expectations anymore. We're, we're, we're down. We're downtrodden. Nothing's going to get better. But then in the end, we say, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hashem is my portion. Therefore, I have hope in him. I mean, things are going to turn around. Everything's going to get better. So says the al Hashem, he explains it. He says, V'abiu nerali, ken, dinei chesed v'achamim, im ki nosei achad lehem, v'chom akom, yesh efresh b'nem. Chesed, mercy, or generosity, and rachamim, which is mercy, even though they're kind of the same thing, there's a difference between them. Vainu, the chesed ain't sich shik demen o midat adim. Loki midat achemim bechach, shitagnen o midat adim. He says like this chesed doesn't always have to have din beforehand, it doesn't have judgments beforehand. But rachamim, mercy, comes after din, the suffering. And God can be generous without having to be downtrodden, right? The guy doesn't have to receive, one doesn't necessarily have to feel downtrodden before feeling generosity from God. However, mercy from God is after one is in suffering beforehand, one is in din, one is in judgment for something, We're going through a period, that period. Uh, let's give us an example. If you say that there's a wealthy man who received through God, who received through the generosity of God, a thousand pounds, a thousand golden coins, you can understand how that's generosity. Um, but, hey Daniel, welcome in. Welcome in. Well, welcome. Okay, so the difference between Chesed and Rachamim. Uh, generosity and mercy. Um, Daniel, I'll just say, you may not understand this whole shoot because you came in the middle, which I'm happy you're here. But um, if you don't understand everything, this is being recorded and I'll uh, um, upload it later to YouTube, okay? Is that it? Okay, wonderful. Um, all right, so continuing. Um, sorry, so it makes sense to say a king was generous with a rich man and gave him a thousand dollars. It doesn't make sense to use the word God. Um, the, the king was merciful with the rich guy and gave him a thousand dollars. Mercy only comes after suffering, right? Generosity can come. You can be a multimillionaire and still someone can still be generous to you, but no one could call it merciful. Okay. Um, so he says here after by the fact he's rich already. There's no mercy there. 
ושם רחמים אינו אלא על העני ששורה עליו מידת הדין. One would say mercy only with regards to giving a gift to a poor person, or helping a poor person, seeing as he has suffered beforehand, and therefore mercy comes and sorts things out. Chen ומי דוד עזר חכמי הקבלה, and this is what Kabbalah refers to also, Chesed, Din, and Rachamim. Chesed, Din, and Rachamim. Shachamim, Ha'echach, Shitkemen, and Midat Adin. When we say Chesed, Din, and Rachamim, the order, Din always comes from Rachamim, because Rachamim is only relevant, mercy is only relevant after one has suffered first. And therefore, we can now try and understand Rabbi Akiva's words of, um, of comfort, uh, comfort and why the rabbis all came to Rabbi, Rabbi Kiva in Bnei Brak. Okay, so continue. We're in the middle here. Kshara Baruch HaKodesh, Shavat HaBavlim, Mesukot V'oni Yisrael, when the Navi in Eicha, Yimiao, saw the suffering of the Jewish people and the tranquility of the Babylonians, which is what Eicha has been uh, written about, Right, we're suffering so much, we're in the middle of the destruction, and Yirmiyahu sees that how amazing it's going to be in the near future for the Babylon, for the Babylonians, how, how much suffering and enslavement there's going to be for the Jewish people. And he writes Eicha, lamenting this crazy thing, and he says like this, Ki echi tachen, right, I'm sorry, there's no even hope for Tukuma, Tukuma, there's no hope of getting back up again, for the Jewish people to survive. Ki ech tit gema kifsak, how will this Small lamb, va'aguma ben zeve teref. How will this um, small lamb su uh, survive being surrounded by the wolves, ravenous wolves? Okay, meaning we're being attacked by all these nations. What hope is there? And therefore he screams and says, My hope is ended. When I remember how much I've suffered. I will become so depressed, says the Navi in um, uh, Eicha, through remembering how terrible the, my life is right now, the nation's life. But afterwards, after realizing, right, like Alcoholics Anonymous, first step is recognizing, recognizing our situation. After coming, after realizing how bad our situation is, he's able to turn everything around. And then he's able to say 180 degrees. This I will return to myself and say and hope. Rather, quite the opposite. When I reanalyze how much tranquility the Babylonians had back then, when Yirmiyahu looks at how the Babylonians are going to have tranquility and have an empire and things are going to go so well for them during a period where the Jews are going to be so downtrodden, when I think about these things, I'll think about the chesed, the generosity that God has given to the Babylonians. They don't need mercy. They're rich. They're getting all what they need, all what they want and more. That's considered generosity. I know, however, says Yimiah when he writes Eicha, they might be getting chesed, they might be getting generosity, benevolence of God. But we are going to get what? We're going to get Rachamim. God, and it, which means that we'll never get destroyed. The Babylon will get destroyed because of generosity. But we will get Rachamim. That after the suffering, God relates with us with mercy as opposed to benevolence. Okay, Benevolence is good as well. But we have the Midah, God relates to us with the Midah of Rachamim. That's why um, Rabbi Kiva is able to see the Babylonians, uh, the Romans, I'm sorry, in the Second Temple having such a great time and being able to understand and this is the key to our um, survival and our success. Because I know that the Jewish people are going to have mercy. I see the Romans are living lavish lifestyles and living tranquil lifestyles. And a raven, like the ravenous wolves eating us up, the Jewish people up. However, I know that's only because of what? The character trait of? Oh, the fact that God's relating them with generosity. They will, however, and benevolence. However, the, the Jewish people will one day, after the din, after the suffering, have rachman mercy, which turns everything around. 
וזה גוף ההתחזק ואוכיל את שועה דיסר שלא יאכלו חסויים מרוב הצורות. הוא אומר הטעם חסדי השם כי לא טעם It's the benevolence of God that we have been destroyed. So, if we are blessed by God, we are not able to give them the right 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 to give them the right. God has a lot of benevolence and therefore we survive. But all the more so because of God's rachamim, that's why we continue. God has a lot of benevolence and therefore we survive. But all the more so because of God's rachamim, הקשה בוודאי לא יזניחם שיכלו חס ושלום. God's never going to get rid of us. And that's why they are coming. Oh, I missed a bit. והן הם הדברים שנדברו בין התנאים הקדושים. And this is what's going on, right? We said, we read at the beginning, Daniel, this may be a, I'll just fill this in with you so you know what we're talking about. Right, the five rabbis get together in Bnei Brak. We asked why they in Bnei Brak, Rabbi Lazar, Ben Azariah normally never leaves his house for Chag, and we said they together in Bnei Brak, and they're talking so much about the Maggid that they are walk, uh, they are um, interrupted by their um, Talmidim. These five famous rabbis are interrupted by the Talmidim and told, um, "Come on, rabbis, it's time for Shachrit. You have now." So the question is, why they are now in? Uh, why they all gone to Bnei Brak? Why have they gone to Rabbi Kiva? Rabbi Kiva's in Bnei Brak, two of the rabbis from elsewhere. What's drawn them to it? And now we're su- su- supposing that Rabbi Kiva is the source of Imuna, the source of the best pick me up, pick you up you ever can get. Are you feeling down? Who'd you go to? You go to Rabbi Kiva. He can pick you up. Okay? These rabbis who are walking on with Rabbi Kiva in the original story that we mentioned, and they see the tranquility of the Romans, they aren't think, they aren't jealous about the tranquility of the Romans. They're not looking for that. And then they are offended or perturbed and, 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 and disturbed by what? The fact, not that the Romans have it good, but the Jews have it so bad. How much we are suffering. They're making such bad decrees. Just after the destruction of the second temple. When you're straight after the destruction, you're not thinking about the Beit Migash being rebuilt soon, right? They realized it wasn't going to, or they believed, or they, they thought at least, it wasn't happening tomorrow. They're crying out the, the pain of being in the generation of the destruction of the temple. And this is how Rabbi Kiv comforted them. They are being comforted by Rabbi Kiv saying, God has never and will never forget us. Says Rabbi Kiv, not only does it not matter what they're doing, well, we know that God's never going to forget us. And we know, how do we know he's never going to forget us? Because with Kodesh Baruch Hu, God relates with, to us, I'm sorry, with the character trait of mercy. With the non-Jews, he only relates to them, or at least the, the evil ones, with benevolence. The nations who are against us, he only relates to them with benevolence. And as such, we know things are always going to get better. לכן אני אומר, says the Aruch HaShulchan, שבעד זה החזיקו טובה לרבי עקיבא, because of this, they feel these rabbis, that they owe Rabbi Kiva something. אש חזקם בתקווה כלל ישראל תכף אחר חורבן. They have great gratitude to Rabbi Kiva, who is reinforced within them the belief in כלל ישראל, the nation of Israel being everlasting and continuing through God's help. That's why they gather in Rabbi Kiva's house, Rabbi Kiva's city. Rabbi Gamal isn't there. Why? Because he's a Nasi. He can't leave. They couldn't leave. Sorry, they, they left. The, the other four. Right? Rabbi Yoshua, Rabbi Azar ben Azariah, Rabbi Tarfon, And Rabbi Lezer Ben Azariah, Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Yeshua Rabbi Lezer Ben Azariah, 
But we're talking about, sorry, I made, made a mistake earlier. I kept calling Rabbi Lezer ben Azariah. There are two rabbis who were from different places, Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Rabbi Lezer is from Lod, and Rabbi Yeshua is from Pekin. And Rabbi Lezer was the one who never left his house on Chagim. Anyway, back to this. It doesn't really change the answer. Nei Um So we're over here. Ben Kulam, I don't know if you can see in the mouse moving, but here we are. Okay. Um... They all came to him to talk about Yitzhi Mitzrayim, leaving the extras on Chagah Pesach. Because this is a night where you can get to a belief that God is looking after us, right? Yitzhi Mitzrayim. God has our back. We know that we were enslaved for 210 years and that you could have felt such distance from God. But don't worry, Kodesh Baruch had our back. And if you were suffering at the same time, you only need to look at Yitzhi Mitzrayim to know that God's got our back. So they came on the day of Emunah, of Pesach, to be with a man of Emunah who could be the one who would comfort them and make sure they realized that everything's going to be okay. We have a lasting. We're never going to disappear. No matter what weapon of mass destruction, <coughs> Iran, the Persians are trying to develop, no, nothing can wipe us out. And they continued through the night talking about this, strengthening each other's emuna. They lengthened and talked about Amuna and God's Hashkacha and God's divine providence and making sure that He's always and, and making sure that they all had strong beliefs in um, God's divine providence, making sure everything will be okay. All right, and, and until the rabbis came, the Tamidim came and said, Rabbis, it's time for Kriyat Shema. Why they say that? It's not just stand with Kriyat Shema. It's they went until, if you were to think of a Pasuk, which most, um, so many Jews died uttering, a Pasuk which represents, a, a verse which represents the real Amun and Kodesh Baruch that Pasuk is Shema. Right? Shema Yisrael Hashem Akein Hashem Echad. Hero Israel, Lord Hashem Akein Hashem Echad, Lord Hashem is our Lord, Hashem is one. So, right, that's the Pasuk. So they are saying, Rabbis, let's go. When a stand you've been speaking about this all night. But don't forget. No, it's not don't forget. But continue into what? The morning. With Kriya Shema, another declaration of the belief in God. To strengthen weakened knees. To strengthen weakened knees. After Kriyashma, before we say Ka Israel, we believe, uh, we state, I'm sorry, Magen Mashiach. right? He's the aid of our forefathers. He's the Magen, the shield, or Moshiach, the uh, savior, the children of the fathers, through all generations. We don't say this psalm, we say it just on Shema. And before we um, say Shema Yisra, the Tefillah Shema Yisra, the Tefillah Amida, to strengthen our beliefs in this fact that we believe God always has our back. Right? Right? The standing upon us to destroy us, they never will succeed. And that is the reason why, even though one of these rabbis is from Pekin, and one of these rabbis is from Lud, and one of these rabbis says you should never leave your house on Chag, when the Beit Midas is destroyed, you should stay at home, but even so, right, you shouldn't leave. Even so, he left, and they made this big journey to Bnei Brak to be able to be close to Rabbi Kiva, the man who has an ability to give them a boost in, in Muna. Even during the hardest times, he's able to be there and give them strength in Muna. And that's why they're there in Bnei Brak. Um, Chaim's not with us now, but... Um, Bnei Brak is also known today as the Ira Torah, the city of Torah. So back then it was the era of, of Emuna, the city of faith. And uh, that's why they're there. They are there to get the boost. Same one. And, and one second, man. And we should all be able to also take from 
these rabbis, the emunah, that no matter how hard it is, we know that God's got our back. God's looking after us and making sure that everything works out. Yeah, what'd you ask, man? This is B'nai Brak today, same one as like the one back then. I, I'm not sure. I can look quickly. I don't think so. Um, because Tel Aviv didn't exist 70 years ago. No, 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 no that's... One second. B'nai Brak's even newer, I think, than Tel Aviv. One second. I don't think it's the same place. One second. No, same place as it was back in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. One second. It's the eighth biggest city. Okay, one second. Ah. Um, it's, it's in the Nachala of Shevet Dan, um, which is on the in the Tel Aviv area. Um, uh, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it's the same place. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's the same place. Um, it's in the same area, but not right next to it. Okay. All right. Anyone have any questions or, or anything to uh, add? Tarakum? Uh, no. Uh, I think I understood everything.